And welcome to episode four of Range Days. I'm here with Josh. My name's Dan Edwards. Josh, it's great to have you today, and I think today we should probably discuss Callaway, Epic Flash, and Epic Flash Sub Zero. I'm excited about this ship. We did some thorough testing. We know some THPers have had this one in the bag for a while, and I think we're going to enjoy the discussion we have today. Yeah. Uh, when it first came out, I know you had spent some time at Callaway uh, at a very interesting launch. I don't know. The, the event itself seemed a little bit different as we followed along on the THP community on the forum. Maybe tell us a little bit about um, what they brought to the table during that event and what seemed different, uh, especially when you see something like the name Epic return after a small hiatus. It was a really different event, and it was actually very cool. It wasn't filled with your typical golf media type event. There weren't a lot of presentations. They didn't deep dive into technology. It was a bunch of influencers from everything from actors to football players and everything in between, getting out there, testing the clubs, and then asking questions about why things are doing what they're doing. It was really well done, and kudos to Callaway for kind of opening the doors to ECPC, which is the Elite Callaway Performance Center, to a group of people that just wanted to share the message and their love of golf. Yeah, the the idea of influencers and people who uh, have a an impact on the game and in, in social and, and other ways like that it's definitely a new take and i think it it plays in well with how unique flash is compared to a lot of other heads out there uh, i was actually doing some research on their website uh, not too long ago and, and obviously following along as the tech story is told they talk about uh this flash face ai the machine learning uh for those who might not be overly familiar with it or as the process goes, Josh, I believe most companies stick with the probably under 10 prototype driver 10 to faces, 12, 10 yeah. to 12 faces uh, with machine learning, with AI, with flash face. They had the ability to create something like 15,000 different iterations, uh, which actually learned, learned from itself before finally landing on what kind of looks like a mountain range that is flash face. Yeah, it, when I first saw it, and you were actually with me in Callaway when we first saw it way back in September, just the face. We didn't learn anything about it. They weren't giving us a lot of information. It looked like if you were an alien on Mars looking down at what a golf course with a bunch of peaks, valleys would look like, yeah. that's what the back of Flash Face looks like. So one of the coolest parts going back to that launch event I was at was the night before there was a group dinner, um, really more of just a meet and greet with food and drinks and everything set up bump my microphone there sorry about that and chip brewer the ceo of callaway golf was standing in the front of the room with harry arnett and they weren't talking about technology they weren't even talking about their product in fact they never even said the name of their product at this time and while i had been there previously with you and learned a little bit about it the group didn't really know what they were about to get into and chip brewer said coming if you move forward a dozen or 20 years this will be looked at the same way as cad coming to the golf equipment industry will be looked at and one of the biggest steps forward in the golf industry as a whole and it's hard to argue with the results so far obviously a little early in the life cycle and that's why we're doing this on range days yeah and and what i like about it is there are continuations of technologies that are already successful for callaway things like jailbreak technology i know we've seen a version of this moving weight uh along the back of the head which i'm really excited this year as i'm a, a typically a sub-zero guy uh we now have that weight it's i think 16 grams it moves uh, side to side to change the kind of flight path of the ball um a lot of things going on uh, give me just a little bit of uh, thoughts on the the crown as it as it is designed um, before we head to the bay to talk about some shots I hit with it. Sure, and there's a a little funny part in the bay where you hit a ball and just kind of laughed, <laughs> and we'll get into that after the results. But if you can see this here in the picture, I, obviously I'm a little small on the image, but they've got the composite crown, and then there's a line that goes through it. And I remember when the black and white pictures first leaked on the internet. And people were just like, oh my God, that line, it's crazy. It actually frames the ball pretty well. And when you set up to it, you don't even really notice it's there after a swing or two. But it, it actually looks really good. But it's a glossy finish with a carbon fiber in the back sliding towards just a plain kind of traditional black shiny finish as you move towards the alignment arrow, in this case, which is a Callaway Chev. 
and uh, it, it's good looking head as you stand over it. Traditional looking, a little more traditional than the Rogue was last year, and uh, a little bit different than what the Epic was a couple of years ago. I definitely agree with that. That was my first takeaway when I got it uh, in the bay and started hitting shots with it. I, I say we head over there and see uh, 10 shots that I hit, including me uh, reacting, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, that would be the best way. And we'll come back and talk about your laughter afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Josh, we're back. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull down the showdown image just uh, real quick since we've saw we've, since we've seen ten shots in the bay. I think we should take a look at the overall shot data. Uh, okay. Driver, uh, the the red. Don't rep mind the that we had a buck in the background. <laughs> That's our THP mascot arrow who's down by my feet, letting everybody know what he thinks of Epic Flash. There you go. So we have uh, the red. The collection of shots was the regular Epic Flash, and the blue is the Epic Flash Sub-Zero, which was the secondary collection, while I, not to continue to use the same word, but collected myself after the first shot with Sub-Zero. i got to tell a quick story about that. <laughs> um, we were, as you guys have seen the shots, there's no break in the action. It may look like it. We take 10 shots in a row. There's no kicking out a bad one or kicking out a good one. You saw all 10 swings. Usually, right before we do this, Dan takes two swings, maybe one, with a with a driver, and just to get the weight down, so he can center the club a little bit. And he did that in this case. And the first shot he hit was one of the longest he hit all day. And then the next shot he hit was the one you saw, where he's just laughing. And you can kind of see by the numbers there. And I'm looking at them on my screen to the right. Um, it was he just couldn't stop laughing because of how well he hit it and the numbers you were seeing. So yeah, it was uh, one to three shots before every driver started just to get an idea of swing weight and things like that. Um, I pulled, uh, I think it took me maybe two swings with the Epic Flash as we transitioned from another uh, OEM. And then- Yeah, and actually to, to, to compound that, you hit one based on what I have showing here and you said, well, I think we better start recording these because I don't yeah. want to get better than that. And then the next <laughs> shot, it got better than that. And that was, uh, I think, the shot before shot six, so the first one with a sub-zero. Uh, I think it's a good time to dive in to best shots. So okay. I'm going to transition really quickly to my first best, well, arguably my best shot with uh, the Epic Flash, the regular version. And, and I mean... It may as well be not, You're not even getting any better than that. Yeah, not trying to toot my own horn, but we're on the Iron Byron right now. Zero millimeters, zero millimeters. That is dead center. Um, the the face uh, path is out to end a little bit, as we've seen with me on range days. But my face is close to target, which gives an insane efficiency, Josh. It does, and I, I want to point something out for those that have followed all the range days. You're seeing Dan with the playable loft at about 17 and a half degrees, which is higher than some of the other ones and lower than one or two. Seeing that and still getting the efficiency you're getting is downright staggering. And you see the number to kind of tell you what exactly is going on there. Um, this was a golf shot. The fact that you hit 1.44 efficiency, those that follow us 
know that we test on the GC quad and 1.45, 1.46, probably about as perfect as you can get. And that's like over 1.51 kind of stuff that you see on TrackMan yeah. when 1.5 is technically ideal. This was a golf shot to remember. So interestingly enough, it wasn't the fastest club head speed I'd been seeing all day. Um by comparison but one thing that i took away and you're going to see this i think all the way through the best and worst shots that i hit uh, my face with the callaway seemed to do a lot better job of uh, turning into the ball so not staying open uh, i'm not sure if that's a design thing josh i'm not sure if that's a waiting thing uh, but i think i think in a, i think it, it, if you're speaking from a purely stylistic standpoint i would say yes it's a waiting thing that keeps you it, it's designed to get you through the zone and you can obviously tinker with that a little bit with the movable weight in the back yeah and and i've i've been so fond of callaway drivers i've played probably eight of them over the last decade uh this one just felt like everything i'd used been used to hitting in the past um so let's go ahead and send it to shot two my second best with uh, epic flash we're we're not as good uh, not as good at 1.44 efficiency josh and we're a little bit towards the toe so we get nine millimeters towards the toe and just a little bit high yeah so this one was really kind of interesting because when you look at we've talked about gear effect a little bit and you know really forgiveness in nature with a head missing one yard <laughs> one yard left is pretty pretty special combine that again with a 1.44 efficiency on a ball that was slightly high getting that efficiency when you go high for those that have followed along know that as you go high you're going to lose a little speed you don't normally see that kind of efficiency as you get up on the face this one's very little not much up but a little bit and a little bit towards the toe you're seeing efficiency and distance that you just shouldn't see in those kind of areas and that's what really makes that unique yeah it, it surprised me uh obviously spins up a little bit and and that was uh an interesting statistic there compared to the fact that it was a little bit towards the toe so i'd expect some less spin than mm -hmm. being center on the face um but i think my overall takeaway is you know if i can slide towards the toe a little bit and and ha still have that accuracy and still maintain so much of that efficiency i i, I think that's that's pretty exciting to see uh yeah, this was about as exciting. You didn't know what to expect going into it, and we we should say these, this during this testing was the first time you would ever hit these clubs. Yeah, and and full disclosure, I I'd spent quite a bit of time with Rogue trying to trying to really reel it in, and and it just it was never a driver that suited my game. Um, I hit a lot of shots left, and I couldn't really figure it out. Uh, and that was after loving the original Epic, so. You know, coming back, I had I had no expectations. Uh, I was basically dead neutral on the whole thing, and and it was really really positive all the way through. Uh, good time, Josh. I think let's kick it to my worst shot with um, Epic Flash. Really high in the face for me. Uh, Ten towards the toe, fifteen high. Really solid backspin numbers. Uh, maintain the same carry that we saw from the last shot. Uh, with some, that's the part that blew us away. Yeah, with some significantly reduced efficiency yeah this is a miss that you know those who have followed this series know that you're a pretty really good driver of the golf ball is the best way to say it but 10 millimeters towards the toe 15 millimeters high suggests that this is pretty much what a lot of us do out there i know this is a miss that i know well the high toe and seeing this kind of speed maintained uh, was really, really telling. We did this a number of times with a lot of products, and it wasn't really the same outcome every time. Now, it was for some models, but not like this. This was this was pretty solid seeing a 274 carry out of a drive like this. Yeah, uh, I was definitely impressed. The launch a little bit higher at 15.6. We, we Something we didn't mention, Josh, we, we kept, I believe, both uh, weights in the back at neutral, and we used the yes. stock uh, available to everyone hazardous smoke 65 stiff i believe is the number yes 65 stiff hazardous smoke we actually took the shaft out of one head and put it in the other so it was identical and both weights were lined up dead neutral in the back right so i think it's a good time to transition to uh, my best shot with sub-zero which yeah. not unlike uh not unlike the the present moment i was laughing in the bay 
two straight shots and in fact we wish we had just a rolling camera going because it was pretty entertaining to to be there and to kind of this is golf to me this is finding that uh that quality connection that you know you're always searching for that feeling that you just really laid into one um full disclosure here when we were setting up this episode dan sends me a message as i'm doing the graphics for this and he said uh how are we supposed to pick a bad shot with the (laughs) sub-zero because and you'll see it It, it, obviously you can see the pattern kind of there in the bottom right hand of the screen but every one of these was pretty exceptional and that is not something we've seen and you even said to me afterwards it would be really hard not to play this driver yeah it did once again i i play that out to end path right now as i try to improve my swing and to have a club head square into the ball the way this one did you know you see 1.2 degrees face close to target which is supporting that path a little bit you know i i've always played a pull draw uh, trying to get away from it but you'll see when we when we take it down the range with this there are four within couldn't be 10 yards of each other and then one that i missed on the right uh, spoiler alert that's my miss uh, but 286 carry josh with a stock shaft with absolutely no fitting involved to me uh spin numbers below 2400 that this was <laughs> this was a, a really positive experience for me yeah that was pretty good and probably segue to the next shot here yeah yeah let's go to it um we're at uh 283 carries so a little bit less um efficiency still up in that 1.42 range mm-hmm. club head speed um, is 1. actually 1.42 efficiency as you go again towards the toe towards and the high. toe yeah technically your efficiency should come down a little bit but and to go even a step further your spin loft here at 18.1 degrees you're still showing near identical and perfect numbers yeah and and i i did notice josh we've got two drivers here with a club head speed of 114 with the last iteration the epic flash being at 113 i don't know if this was uh, a little bit of uh, adrenaline after seeing a couple of those shots but you know, there there could be something there just in the way that it uh, performs for my for my swing and the way I, way I like to drive into the ball. I would agree with you. Now, we should probably move to your worst shot because you're making our viewers pretty angry. <laughs> All right, here we are at one point four one, closing in on the the toe section at twelve millimeters, a little bit high again on the face, Josh. We're still in that two hundred two hundred eighty yard carry range. Uh, which I don't, I don't think I left 280 or or worse. No, through these didn't. five shots. Uh, it just, it, this is hard to call is it a it, miss. Are you short of words right now? Yeah, I mean it's hard to call it a miss. You know, it, it's and and I took it on course the following day. You had posted on the THB community a, a pretty ridiculous number uh, with my gamer shaft uh, plugged into it, and I was having a little fun with that as well in the bay, but. You know, I never really felt like short of uh, short of laughing and having too much fun. That I I just I just found the center of the face really easily with this club. And to go a step further, when you did miss, it didn't have really any impact on the distance you were seeing. We're talking about a miss that was an inch big. I guess would be the best description around the face. If I'm holding up this driver, he had a couple that were over here and only losing seven to eight yards of distance is something you just don't get all the time we'd love to say that's because of flash flash face we honestly don't know but we saw it and don't know why and it was something that i I was pretty impressed with yeah and once again we do want to reiterate this is this is once we hit play we hit five shots whatever the, whatever those five shots are that's what we go with that's what range days is built on uh we yes. do have a, a a prep session where i hit one to three shots and then once i told josh to switch um to that that uh starting point there's five shots in succession and we're, and all of we're them all are recorded it. and those are the swings you saw there was no break there's no kick out the bad ones anything like that right so i think it's a good time josh i moved it over to the downrange view uh once again the blue dots are sub-zero the red dots are the regular epic flash um as we kind of alluded to that dispersion with the epic flash sub-zero is so tight with that one let's call it a miss just kind of hanging out to the right uh with with just silly numbers 
one of the things, yeah, and that's crazy, I, I wanted to bring up in this episode, because it's been a popular subject on the THP forum, is the sound. And we kind of talked about it on the course, that the sound, when struck well, was, yeah, and you could hear it in the bay, was a little more metallic than maybe Rogue and Epic were, but not obnoxious. But one of the things you liked, some people may like it, some people may not, is the sound changes depending on where you hit it on the face. So you kind of get that instant feedback of what you're seeing. Can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I think I think when you look at the way that driver's been built the last couple of years, it, for a while we were getting louder and louder, and then suddenly we all or they all joined in this sort of muted overhaul. Um, and and I, I don't think that Callaway was an exception to the rule. Uh, so when I, I first hit Epic uh, Flash, I had expectations of, uh, based on a couple of rumors out there, but a whole lot of conversations saying, you know, it sounds quite good. And, and obviously we saw a, a number of guys hitting it at the granddaddy this past year, uh, raving about the sound alongside the uh, the guys over at Callaway. So when I hit it, I was expecting something very significant and uh, certainly not on the button, uh, certainly not in the middle of the face. I, I just, I, I hit a, a driver that is very telling when I hit it well and, and very positive in the way it provides feedback to me. Um, we saw a little bit of a different sound, Josh, from the Epic, the, the Flash, the regular from we versus the Sub-Zero was that not more kind of high towards the toe that where was it that we were activating that little bit more higher pitched metallic profile yeah on the regular epic flash as you got towards the toe and a little bit high but really the toes side more than anything it got a little i'll use the term metallic again since that's kind of the word i've been going with in this (laughs) series um a little higher pitched and some people may like that some people may not i i've been saying this for a while now that with these two drivers this is not a take a look at a price difference between the two a lot of companies they have one driver at one price one driver at another this is one that has a a pretty substantial change between the two drivers in both launch and spin but also sound so i think people need to either go get fit or try them both out and make sure they like what they're seeing in your case you saw a significantly better results as people have seen now with the sub-zero whereas i was the exact opposite uh i saw better results with the regular epic flash where my spin was in that 2600 to 2800 range which i like in florida i like a little more because we don't get any roll out here so i want to increase my carry as somebody who's a little steep i'm already a higher spinner of the golf ball so it's definitely not a high spin head by any means whereas you saw the exact opposite you were in that 3000 range just a little less with the flash and then you drop into the sub-zero and you were looking at 22 to 2,500 and literally murdering the cover off the ball. Yeah, I, I brought I brought the full shot data back to kind of support your premise here, Josh. Uh, we, we were what looks to be about 300 RPMs of spin difference between the two heads. And there was a lot of consistency across both of my experiences. So there, there wasn't anything really driving the numbers one way or the other. Um, kind of touching back on my experiences down range i i did notice the the tendency of the sub-zero was surprisingly left for me uh, i think that could be a fitting thing maybe elevate the uh they, there is a, a nice adapter system that allows you to change the way the the head profiles uh kind of bring it back to center a little bit i'm sure uh what uh-huh. what surprises me between the two is just the consistency of the sub-zero and maybe it was just the way it swung for me was really tight versus the epic flash which was a little bit across the board but still our our distance to center was so good that yeah it's hard to um it's hard to take concern when you see that kind of dispersion yeah i mean 10 balls all of which would be in the fairway is never a bad thing um you don't normally see that at least we don't on range days for the different drivers we've taken a look at this one was exceptional for you i know it's been exceptional for a lot of the thp community where they've been talking about this for a while uh we had 12 guys get it in play back in december before it hit stores at the granddaddy that dan's alluded to he's even got the little granddaddy g going on right there as a person who's been in it i think it was three or four years ago um but it's one of those things where 
we're, we test every product that comes out. In fact, where you're going to see episodes like this on every single driver that's in out in 2019, including some you may not have heard of, like Majesty and things like that. This one was just one of those ones that performed per, particularly well for Dan and then myself as well the next day on the golf course. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned the granddaddy, Josh. I, I can't remember what happened that year, did we? Uh... It was the only year that THP has ever won the granddaddy, and Dan had the championship <laughs> belt to go along with it. Um, <laughs> first in fun, though, Dan, that counts for always, something. Always, always, always. Josh, let's, uh, let's kind of move into the wrap-up session here. We've seen two drivers. Obviously, they worked really well for my game, which made it one of the most enjoyable experiences uh, for me to coming back, not having to deal with some ugly numbers on my worst shots. But uh, give me give me your final thoughts on Epic Flash. I think that the company that has been at the forefront or one of the companies at the forefront of technology has improved upon a driver that a lot of people don't kind of see. If you're changing drivers every three or four months, you might not see a significant upgrade as you move year to year, regardless of the brand you're with. In this case, we saw a pretty significant jump from Rogue to Epic Flash uh, for Dan. And I think that's worthy of, of testing it out. For a lot of people, this is a driver that they've been looking for because it has the forgiveness and the speed. A lot of times you don't get forgiveness and speed. But as we go through these episodes, of range days you're seeing a lot of products come out that are extremely well done there's not a lot of products that make dan laugh in the hitting bag <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's truth to that uh, my kind of takeaway josh is that I, I love how this company has created two drivers that provide a different experience to the user but have that same sort of overall profile I love that both now have movable weight technology to support uh, left shots and right shots. And, and, you know, the way that I was ingrained, I just finished talking about changing the adapter. At the end of the day, I could change uh, finally on a sub zero, I'd be able to change the weighting, which is actually really exciting for me. So uh, that that will will certainly play a role for the, the golfers who are better swingers and uh, uh, looking for lower spin overall. Did you just tell me you got excited out of changing an adapter? Uh, no, changing the location of the adapter. They have like a uh, they have a fade setting. That is that is exciting stuff. But now I have a, a moving weight to to roll with it, so I don't have to worry about making those changes. <laughs> that is true, and I think we're gonna wait and hear even more feedback as we get into golf season around the country, uh, at, throughout from regular golfers that are giving us feedback on the forum. Yeah, I, I think the last couple of years have been really exciting uh, in terms of the Callaway driver front on the THP forum. Uh, if you're new to THP on YouTube, you are more than welcome to join in, in the conversation. We, uh, we can be found at www.thehackersparadise.com. We have a, a large forum, large presence uh our community presence there which i believe is coming in close on six million posts uh it, it might there. even be six million by the time this airs that's true and and, and something i noticed the other day almost a hundred thousand threads so yes. always something to talk about don't forget to like and subscribe right down there well dan's right down there but right below dan <laughs> under dan uh, we'll do a like want to like subscribe dan like a comment uh and what do we we we've had these uh the last couple of weeks, Josh, we've had something to get the guys talking in the comments, whether it's team colors, team differences. W what are we saying here? Are you team Flash or team Sub-Zero? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is going in, whether you've tried this or not. Let us know in the comments below if you're team Flash, team Sub-Zero, and we want to hear from you. We want to know which one you think you'd be on or which one you are on. There you go. And uh, we'll be back again soon with uh, another episode of Range Days. Josh, thanks for the time today and looking forward to the next one. Mm -hmm.